happen next week. Ellen, were you surprised by the allegations about P. Diddy? Did that surprise you about P. Diddy? Alan, He's been on your show many times. So tell me about your birthday party. Am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. When I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen me to show up. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ellen. Happy birthday to you. You didn't invite me to the party, so I'm just here in my office having shots in honor of one of the most beautiful women in the world. We knew it was only a matter of time before Ellen DeGeneres, often referred to as the Queen of Mean, would be drawn into the ongoing Diddy situation. Recently, paparazzi caught up with Ellen to ask her how she feels about her longtime friend Diddy facing some serious allegations. Ellen appeared visibly nervous when reporters mentioned those infamous parties Diddy has hosted over the years. Diddy was a frequent guest on The Ellen Show, and now, with the current accusations about his parties coming to light, fans are revisiting some of his older interviews. In many of these, Diddy openly talks about his well-known parties. When your parties start, let's say? Like 9.30. Really? That early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. Like what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party, though. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's even a playful moment where Diddy teases Alan about why she consistently declined invitations to his events. So tell me about your birthday party. Am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. When I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen me to show up. By subscribing to my channel, you can help me investigate Diddy events further. But here's the twist. Rumors suggest that Alan did indeed attend some of Diddy's gatherings. However, sources claim these weren't the high-profile, celebrity-filled events we typically associate with Diddy. Instead, there are whispers that Ellen may have attended more private gatherings at Diddy's house, where unsettling and potentially illegal activities are rumored to have occurred. Meanwhile, some uncomfortable footage recently resurfaced on social media, showing Ellen making Justin Bieber uncomfortable with inappropriate questions. Bora Bora? Yeah. And you're just naked with your friend? Why are you putting me on the spot like this? Gosh. I mean, you can say, why can't you say you're dating somebody? I'm not dating anyone, though. She's just a friend? She's just a friend. Wow. <laughs> I have friends, I've never seen them naked like that. <laughs> and they don't bring me to Bora Bora. Stop, you're making me blush, dude. With ongoing rumors that Justin may have been allegedly victimized by Diddy and other industry figures, fans are now wondering if Ellen had any knowledge of what happened to Justin. But what's the real story behind Ellen and Diddy's friendship? Did Ellen attend these alleged secretive parties, and could she become involved in the ongoing federal investigation into Diddy? First, let's talk about why people are speculating that Ellen DeGeneres and Diddy have more in common than what appears on the surface. To clarify, Ellen hasn't faced any serious criminal allegations like Diddy, but she does have a reputation as one of the harshest figures in Hollywood, and some of the rumors about her are quite unsettling. Both Diddy and Ellen have presented themselves to the public in a way that's quite different from how they may be behind closed doors. But it seems like the image they've carefully curated over the years is starting to crack, revealing glimpses of their true selves. Ellen started her career in the 80s, performing stand-up comedy in small venues and coffee shops in New Orleans. She quickly gained traction and began touring across the country. Her first big break on TV came with a short-lived sitcom Open House in 1992. Although it didn't last long, producers were impressed by her and cast her in their next project, These Friends of Mine, which was later renamed Ellen. But Ellen made her biggest impact in April 1997 when she came out on The Oprah Winfrey Show with her sitcom character following suit in the iconic Puppy episode, a groundbreaking moment in TV history for its portrayal of LGBTQ plus issues. After her sitcom ended, Ellen returned to stand-up before making a successful comeback with The Ellen Show in 2001, followed by her immensely popular daytime talk show The Ellen DeGeneres Show. However, despite her image as the friendly, goofy talk show host who loved to dance and give away prizes, cracks in Ellen's public persona began to appear. In 2007, a former writer from her sitcom spoke out about how she treated the writing staff poorly, criticizing their work behind closed doors while maintaining a charming front during rehearsals. 
Similar stories circulated over the years, but Ellen managed to keep most of them under wraps until 2016 when Kathy Griffin spilled the tea in her memoir about an encounter with a certain beloved daytime talk show host with short blonde hair. Griffin later confirmed she was referring to Ellen, revealing a less warm and fuzzy side of the talk show host. She was furious. <gasps> what, did she say? what did she say? She just really was on a rant. Because I had mentioned on your show that, you know, I wish that women would support each other more, in particular, super, super influential women. There's so few female comics over 50 that are making a living or doing okay. Like, we need to support each other. I expressed that to her, and she was like, I don't have to have anybody on my show I don't like and I don't want. And I said, I know. A couple of years ago, more and more celebrities began speaking out about Ellen's less-than-pleasant behavior, and clips of Ellen being rude or making guests uncomfortable started circulating on social media. Let's rewind to that uncomfortable interview Ellen had with Mariah Carey back in 2008. This moment is a prime example of how far Ellen would go to stir up publicity for her show. At the time, there were rumors swirling that Mariah might be pregnant, but she hadn't confirmed anything yet. Despite Mariah visibly appearing uncomfortable with the subject, Ellen kept pushing her for an answer, even going as far as offering Mariah champagne on air to prove she wasn't pregnant. Who knows what they hold? Who knows? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, cheers. Yeah, cheers. It's too early for me. Yeah. I only drink it after 3 p.m. Yeah. Mm. You're pregnant. <laughs> It later turned out that Mariah was dealing with something much more personal. She was going through a miscarriage, which is heartbreaking on its own. Imagine being put on the spot like that in front of millions. Years later, Mariah opened up about how painful that moment was for her, admitting, I was extremely uncomfortable with that moment. It's all I can say. I really struggle in miscarriage. I don't want to throw anyone who's already been criticized under the bus, but I didn't enjoy that moment. And let's not forget the iconic Dakota Johnson moment. You know, the one where Dakota called out Ellen. Ellen tried to play it cool, pretending she hadn't been invited to Dakota's birthday party, a classic move. But Dakota wasn't having any of it and directly called Ellen out on her fib, and you could visibly see Ellen regretting her comment in that moment. Ellen wasn't invited to Dakota Johnson's birthday party, and she made a classic attempt to joke about it on her show. Party, I wasn't invited. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. Last year, no, last time I was on the show, last year, you gave me a bunch of shit about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. Well, who didn't want to be invited to a party? Well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> <laughs> of course I like you. You knew I liked you. You've been on the show many times, and, and don't I show like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I did invite you, and you didn't come, so. This time you invited me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. But Dakota wasn't having it. She directly called out Ellen's false claim, and you could see the regret wash over Ellen's face. We also can't forget Wendy Williams, who has had her own tense moments with both Diddy and Ellen. Rumor has it that years ago, Diddy allegedly used his influence to get Wendy off the radio because he wasn't happy about her revealing some controversial gossip. Allegedly, he made some calls, pulled a few strings, and suddenly Wendy found herself off the airwaves, a classic example of how powerful figures can react when called out. A similar moment happened recently on the Jimmy Kimmel show with Diddy, which felt like a deja vu of Dakota and Ellen's interaction. Just weeks before Cassie filed her lawsuit last November, Diddy appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live. When Jimmy brought up Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, and the allegations he made, you could see Diddy's calm, collected persona start to slip. It was another instance of a public figure struggling to maintain their composed image under pressure. Then came a major moment, Jimmy Kimmel brought up rumors involving Diddy, Jennifer Lopez, Will Smith, and Jada Pinkett Smith, hinting at a supposed wild party or threesome back in the day. Diddy's reaction? Let's just say he wasn't exactly pleased to have those rumors resurface on national TV. And now, there's a viral conspiracy theory circulating that suggests Ellen might have had some involvement in her ex-girlfriend and Hetchy's tragic death.
For those unfamiliar, and Hetchy was an actress who dated Ellen in the late 90s, and their relationship was widely publicized as one of the first high-profile same-sex couples. Fast forward to 2021, when Anne made a shocking revelation on her podcast, claiming that Ellen had tried to have her institutionalized and blacklisted in Hollywood. Just over a year after this revelation, Anne died in a car accident. Initial reports suggested she was under the influence and behaving erratically, but the final autopsy revealed no substances in her system, raising questions and sparking suspicion. Do you think we are exaggerating and interpreting all these events too much, or is the dark Hollywood theory real and there are many more unknown things? Mention it in the comments.